Hello guys, and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you step-by-step -step how to model this ring in Blender. And we're also gonna be adding some basic materials. It's really simple. I'm gonna go step-by-step, -step, so I hope you guys enjoy it. We're not gonna be doing anything too crazy, just very simple things that you've probably already used inside of Blender, like the array modifier and things like that. So there's no geometry nodes, no maths, just really, really simple stuff. So let's jump in. And I will be uploading this to my Patreon as well. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna to wanna to get the add-on enabled. It's already built into Blender, just in case um, you don't have it enabled. So you're gonna to go to edit, over, sorry, edit, then go to preferences. You're gonna go over to your add-ons and then under the search here, you're just gonna type in um, extra. Okay, so I've already enabled extra mesh, extra objects. So that's what you're gonna go ahead, click on a little tick. So now what's gonna happen, um, in fact, let's just delete all of the default objects first. If you now go Shift A and under your mesh options, you're gonna scroll down and you should now see some extras here, right? Including the diamonds. So if you're gonna to go to the diamonds, uh, let's go over here with Brilliant Diamond, like that. I'm gonna come over here to the custom um, properties here. Let's go up to the segments and let's go, I think, something like 20. Okay, that's looking good. I'm gonna go with 20 and I'm gonna close that. And then we wanna make some little prongs that kind of go around here. We're gonna approach this in a very simple way. So we're gonna go Shift A we're gonna be adding in a UV sphere. And uh, let's go into our front orthographic view. Now this UV sphere has a little origin point in the center. So we actually wanna tab into edit mode. And then in edit mode in our front orthographic, we're gonna go S to scale this down. And then we're just gonna go G and move it over here so it's in the edge of our diamond. Now you can see here that the little orange dot here, that's our origin point, that's in the center. So if we tab back into object mode and we press R, you can see it rotates around that origin point. That's really important because that's gonna be a pivot for us. So um, for now, let's just leave this over here. We're in object mode and we're gonna go ahead and give this an array modifier, which isn't really gonna help us the way it's currently set up because um, we don't wanna go along a linear kind of path. What we wanna do is we wanna kind of take this around and offset. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come here to this factor here on the X, let's just make it zero. So all of these transforms here are set to zero. We want to go to Object Offset, and then we need to choose an object. So we're going to go Shift A, and a good option here is an empty. So we're going to go to Empty, add in a cube, and then what we're going to do is we're going to select this, and we're going to go to this Object Offset, and we're going to go to this little eyedropper, and then select that empty. Now keep in mind, this empty also has an origin point. And if this origin point isn't in the right place, this is what's going to happen. So make sure that the origin point of your empty is in the same origin point as this object over here, which we're gonna select. And um, actually what we need to do is just select this thing here, the empty and go R, Z. So R, Z and just rotate it a little bit until you kind of see this like that. There's like a spacing here. Okay, so I'm gonna go something like this. You can always adjust it. Then let's select this object here, this little prongs and let's just give, give it more uh, arrays. So I'm gonna go with something like, let's go 37. And then let's just grab the empty and let's go R to rotate. Now, depending on the scale of these, this little sphere here, it might be different for you. So just get it so it's roughly in place. You can do less or more with the count here and you can rot that, rotate this however you want, okay? So that's gonna, gonna give us this thing here. We're then gonna grab this again, tab into edit mode and then in our front of the graphic, what we're gonna do, we're gonna shape this a little bit. So we're gonna go to our vertex select option we're gonna enable our proportional editing and then in our front view, let's just select some verts here and then go G. And we're using our proportional fall off and I'm just slightly rolling the wheel just to make it a bit smaller. And I'm just gonna make it like this. And then I'm gonna press A to select everything, put it right on the edge of the diamond like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go Shift Alt and then left click on an edge over here like that. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate it rotate it, we're still in the front view, and I'm just gonna place it inside of here. And then I'm gonna go E to extrude, just a little bit down like that. And this is kind of just like a prong that's gonna hold that. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into object mode, I'm gonna right click and go shade smooth. Now in this case, you can see we have funny shading here, so that's because of our normals. Let's just quickly tab back in, select everything, and then we're gonna go Alt N, and then we're gonna go recalculate outside. Now that fixes our normal, so we're gonna tab back out. And now we have these little prongs and we don't have to make each individual one, which is really good. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A again, we're gonna go to our mesh options. Let's add, going back down to the diamond, let's add in a brilliant diamond. And let's come to our custom brilliant and let's just 
change this down to 12. Okay, we want less of them. And then we're gonna go into edit mode. We're gonna leave it so the origin points here in the center. We're gonna go S to scale it down and then G to move it. We're in edit mode in our front orthographic and let's place this one roughly here. And we're gonna scale it about this much. Okay, so you kind of see what we're doing with this. We're gonna tab back out so the origin point is still in the center. Then we're gonna, with this selected, hold in shift and then select this kind of pearl we have over here, this kind of um, prongs that hold everything. And we're gonna go control L and we're gonna go link or copy modifiers. So now if we select a diamond, it has the same modifier, but we don't want it to be using the same empty. So let's select this empty. Let's go shift D to duplicate, right click to let go. And let's just go R, Z and just rotate it a little bit differently so we can see. And let's select the diamond here. Let's go and let's go and select empty.001. And now it's using this empty over here. As you can see, now we have way too many diamonds. So let's select the diamonds and we're gonna give that a count of 20 diamonds. And then let's select this empty here, the new empty that we're using. And let's just rotate it till we can see them all kind of next to each other. If you have to tab into edit mode and just scale it down a bit and then rotate your empty again in object mode. Oops, grab the other one. Just to get it roughly in place. So something like that is looking okay. Now in edit mode again, you can come in here and just adjust level. And that's looking really cool. So we also wanna make some prongs. So what we're gonna do here, in edit mode. In fact, let's reuse. Let's grab this prong in object mode, shift D to duplicate, bring it out, and then just get rid of the array, and then just place it over here, and then holding in shift, select the diamond, and then go control J to join it, and then tab into edit mode, like so. And uh, what we're gonna do, we're gonna select this prong that we now have added here. We're gonna rotate it and scale it down a little bit and place it over here, like so. And then we're gonna go shift D to duplicate it, rotate it, and place it over here. And now it's automatically gonna also array around like that. We might have to just um, grab both of these and just go G, Z and move them down just so they're sitting over here. So that's gonna kind of, kind of, kind of hold the diamond in place. Might move it down just a little bit more. And then what you can do with those two selected, you can actually go Shift D in your top view and then move them along the X. And then you can go S, X, negative one to invert them like so. And now you have two prongs that you can place over here like that. And you can always, you know, move them individually. I might just um, go to the vertex select and just select two verts on here. Go control L to select the whole thing. Whatever is easier for you, just move it and then grab this one here as well and then move it over here. You might have to rotate it a little bit differently, but you get what we're doing here. We're now just adding these prongs and obviously these two here, select them they need to go down a little bit more on the Z, like so. Okay, tabbing back out, that's looking about right. Now we have what we're looking for. Now we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a circle in the edit mode. And we're gonna tab into edit mode and scale that circle up. G, Z to bring it down, like so. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right click to subdivide. And then what we're gonna do is with all of this active, we're gonna type in F3 and then type in checker and then get a checker deselect. So it selects every other one. And then we're gonna go S to scale like so. And then we're gonna press A to select everything. E to extrude, S to scale like so. And then we're gonna go shift alt S and then we're gonna round it out like this. And we can actually scale, select this whole band here and just scale it up a little bit like so, maybe a little bit smaller, and then go E to extrude and Z and extrude it down. And then we're gonna give this a subdivision surface modifier. And we're gonna select the whole thing and we're gonna go Shift E and just tighten it up a little bit like so. Tab back out, let's increase the viewport and the render. Right click and go Shade Smooth. So now we have this kind of decorative edge around the ring. Now we're gonna go into our front again. We're gonna go, um, let's just reuse this object here. So we're gonna actually just select an edge in here. Shift D to duplicate and then let's go E to extrude and Z and extrude it down. S to scale like so. And then let's tab back out. We're gonna go Shift A, let's add in a cylinder. Let's go S, Z and flatten it and then bring it down. Scale it down a little bit. So just something like this. And I might move it up just a little bit like this. And we'll get back to that later, but for now, 
Let's just leave it at this. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in a circle and we're gonna make the actual ring now. So we're gonna go G, Z and move it down. Then we're gonna go R, X, 9, 0 and hit enter. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode. And let's scale this up about this much and then move it down. Maybe something like this. Then we're gonna go E to extrude, S to scale. Just a little bit. Then we're gonna go G, Z and move it up like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna press A to select everything, E to extrude out like so. We're gonna to go into our right orthographic view and just select some of the bottom verts, enable proportional editing and then go S, Y, and then just kind of scale it on the bottom a little bit like so. Now you can see where we're getting with this. We're gonna go into our front orthographic and just delete half of this, including this little bit here in the middle at the top. And let's give this a mirror modifier, enable clipping, and now we have a very simple ring that we can grab. Let's move it up a little bit in edit mode. And let's select these two verts up here. Let's just adjust them, bring them down a little bit to flatten them out and put them inside that little bit there. We can now um, disable proportional editing. We have our edge select. Let's just select this edge and this edge, this one and this one. Control B just to make a bevel like so. Roll your middle mouse button once. And then we're gonna come in here, Control R, double click, Alt S and then scale that edge like so. Tab back out and let's give this a subdivision surface modifier. Bump it up in both the viewport and the render. Right click and go shade smooth. And now we have this over here. And let's select this bit, tab in here. And let's just give that an inset and then extrude up a little bit like that. And let's give it a nice bevel at the top and the bottom. There we go. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And let's also give that a subdivision surface modifier. Then let's select this bit over here again. You can go control R, add in a loop, just left click and then slide. Let's just scale that a little bit so we cover those prongs and a diamond. And we may actually have to just select the whole thing and just scale it a little bit like this till it kind of covers everything there. And then we can tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. So now we have our ring, as you can see, and it's looking really beautiful. Maybe we can actually make the ring bit a little bit bigger, like so. And you can always come in here and just adjust if you need to. There we go. That's looking better. And let's select the whole thing by pressing A, G, Z, move it to the top of the floor. Let's go Shift A and let's add in a empty again. And then with everything else selected, we're gonna hold in Shift and select the empty, Control P and let's go Object, Keep Transform. Now we can take this one, I'm gonna go S.1 to scale it down. And let's go Shift A and add in a plane. Let's scale it a little bit. And then we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go Shift A, let's add in a camera. And let's bring our camera up, place it above the ring. And I like to go to my focal length. I'm gonna leave it at 50, but what I'm gonna do is under the render here, the output, I'm gonna make it 1920 by 1920, like so. And I'm gonna zoom right in. And then I'm gonna go Control B and drag over my camera to limit the render to this. And at this point, make sure you save. We're then gonna to go to our render engine to change it to cycles. Let's put the max samples to 90. And let's go shift A, let's add in a light and let's move it up. You can do whatever lighting setup you want. I'm just gonna go something really basic, maybe make it 90 on the strength and then do a simple duplication. Just about two lights for now. Let's go to our world settings. Let's just give it a sky texture. Let's. Um, Bring the strength down to 0.5 maybe. And now if we go to a camera and we go Z and we go rendered, this is what we can see. So let's select our floor. Let's go to our materials, click new. Let's call it floor. Let's make the base color black all the way down. And let's take that um, specular and take it all the way down, almost all the way. And let's take our roughness and bring that down as well. So it's nice and reflective. Now we can grab any part of the ring that is metal, go new. 
Let's give it kind of like a rosy kind of copper color. Let's take the metallic, drag it all the way up to one and then bring the roughness almost all the way down. And then we're going to go here and select all of these little frills and prongs. Holding in shift, select the ring and go control L and then this is go link materials. So everything that has to have metal, you can give it a metal material. And then what we're going to do is select the ring, we're going to go new and under the principle, let's just type in glass to give it a glass and then come to the base color and let's just make that kind of like a nice orange. So let's go Z and go rendered. And you can see this is roughness. Let's take that roughness all the way down. And let's grab these little diamonds here. We want to get rid of some reason, for some reason I gave them the metal. So we're just going to give them their own material. Once again, we're going to go to the surface and we're going to get glass. And let's take that roughness all the way down and we're going to leave that as clear. And now you can see this is what we have. So I might go to my world and just right click here and just go to the strength here and make it 0.2 instead. And then I'm also going to just grab my camera. I'm going to go to my camera settings, enable depth of field, click on the little eyedropper and then select a part of my ring as a focus point. And then I'm going to come here to the f-stop and bring it all the way down so I got a nice soft focus. So I might have to actually add in an empty. Kind of put it more closer to the front here where my camera is. And then I'll choose that as a focal object like so. So now if I go Z and I go rendered, I can grab this empty and I can move that around and I can adjust my f-stop till I like what I have. So I'm gonna go something, maybe something like that. That looks okay. Might just zoom in a little bit more to get a bit more of the frame. Maybe rotate my camera so it looks a little bit more from above. And I'm gonna save. And now I'm gonna go render and render image. And there we have it. That is the final result. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. This is my original here. As you can see, it's the exact same thing. And this is the one I'm gonna be uploading to Patreon. I just put a little bit more effort with the lighting in here. But other than that, it's the exact same thing that I showed you to make today. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time.